Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last lecture, we introduced a very important notion known as linear transformations between two vector spaces. Let us recall the definition. Let V and W be vector spaces over a field F. Then a transformation which converts V vectors to W vectors is called a linear transformation. It is a transformation. It is a linear transformation. Of course, it transforms V to W. So, it is a linear transformation from V to W. If what should it do? Since V and W both have vector space structures, both have addition and scalar multiplication and we want this T to preserve the structure of addition and scalar multiplication. So, it is called a linear transformation if 1 it preserves addition that means T of x plus y must be equal to T of x plus T of y for every x y in v. Similarly, it should preserve scalar multiplication that is t of alpha x must be equal to alpha t of x for every alpha in f and for every x in v. So, thus something is a linear transformation from v to b v w first if it is a transformation from B to W and if it preserves this algebraic structure of the vector spaces namely the addition and scalar multiplication operations. Note that the addition on the left hand side of this definition refers to the addition in V because we are adding V vectors and the addition on the right hand side of this definition refers to the addition in W because we are adding w vectors. Similarly, the scalar multiplication on the left hand side here refers to the scalar multiplication in V and the scalar multiplication on the right hand side refers to the scalar multiplication in W. In particular, if V equal to W then a linear transformation from V to V that means, it is again a transformation from V into V that is V vectors are encoded again as V vectors and it preserves the addition and scalar multiplication. Then it is called a linear operator on V, it is called a linear operator on V. So, a linear operator on V is nothing but a linear transformation from V to V. Now, we will look at a very simple property of linear transformation before we see some examples. This is a property which is every linear transformation possesses. So, we have a linear transformation from V to W we will write L t for linear transformation. So, we have a vector space V and a vector space W over a field F and we have a linear transformation from V to W. Now, we have because it is a linear transformation T of alpha x is equal to alpha T of x for every alpha in F and for every x in V. This is because a linear transformation preserves scalar multiplication and in particular 
if we take alpha to be 0, we get T of 0 times x is equal to 0 times T of x. Now, the left hand side what we are doing is we are taking a vector x in v and we are multiplying it by the scalar 0 and so we will get the 0 vector in the v space. On the right hand side we are multiplying by 0 a w vector. So, we will get the 0 vector of the w space on the right hand side. So, we get T of theta v is equal to theta of w which means that a linear transformation always maps the 0 vector into the 0 vector. So, thus any linear transformation from V to W maps the 0 vector theta V to the 0 vector theta W in W. This is a very important property every linear transformation must do it and therefore, if some transformation from V to W does not take the 0 vector to the 0 vector it cannot be a linear transformation. We shall look at some simple examples of linear transformations some of which we have already seen we will just recall them. The first example we see is the following this is the example which motivated us to the definition of linear transformations. There are many ways of motivating linear transformations we chose this example to motivate the definition of a linear transformation. What is this example? Let us take V an n dimensional vector space over the field F. So, we have a n dimensional vector space over the field F and let us choose a basis for V an ordered basis for V any basis must contain n vectors because the dimension of the space is V. So, let B u 1, u 2, u 3 etcetera be an ordered basis for V. So, once we have an ordered basis for V, we knew that any vector x can be expressed as a linear combination of the basis vectors. So, x belongs to V implies x is equal to x 1 u 1 plus x 2 u 2 plus x n u 1. This led us to the identification of x to a vector x b which we define as x 1 x 2 x n which belongs to f n. So, therefore, every vector x in V starting from this we can convert using the ordered basis B a vector x in B. Now, we consider this transformation. So, we define T it comes out because of the basis B. So, we will call it as T B T B a transformation from V to W in this case is F n. So, V to F n defined as T B of x is x B. So, start from a vector x in V construct the column vector and that is in F n and that is a unique column vector because every vector x is a unique representation in terms of the basis. And we have already verified that this identification preserves addition and scalar multiplication already seen that this identification preserves plus and scalar multiplication I will write S m for scalar multiplication. So, this preserves addition and scalar multiplication 
and therefore it is a linear transform. The moment it preserves addition and scalar multiplication, it qualifies to be called as a linear transformation. That implies T B is a linear transformation from V to F. Therefore, the moment you start with an ordered basis B, it automatically generates a linear transformation from B to F n. So, thus every ordered basis B for V induces a linear transformation T B from V to F n. Therefore, if there are infinite number of linear transformations from an n dimensional space to F n because we could choose any basis and any order of that basis and every time we get an ordered basis we have a T B corresponding to it. So, we already a lot of examples of linear transformation. The second example we will look at is a very important example from the point of view of the various questions that we raised in the beginning of the course about linear systems of equations. So, we take V to be the vector space F n where F is a field and W to be the vector space F m where n and m are positive integers. Then let A be any fixed m by n matrix in f m n. So, take any fixed m by n matrix over f, consider the vector space f n and f m. Now, define for every x in f n T A x as follows simply pre multiply the vector x by a a x. So, for every x in f n we construct a x and we call it T a of x. This is a function which converts the vector x to the vector a x and this function is generated out of the matrix a. So, we call it T sub a. So, T sub a of x is a of x. Now, we know that a is an m by n matrix x is an n by 1 matrix. So, the product will be an m by 1 matrix. So, it will belong to f m. So, this belongs to f m for every x in f m. Therefore, this is a transformation which converts the f n vector x to the f m vector a x. Thus, T a maps f n to f m. Since we have a transformation between these two vector spaces, it is natural to ask whether it is a linear transformation. So, is T a a linear transformation from f n to f m? Let us check this. In order to verify whether it is a linear transformation from f n to f m, we have to verify the two basic conditions that whether T a preserves addition, whether T a preserves scalar multiplication. So, let us check addition. Suppose, we have two vectors x y in f n. Then by the definition of T a, T sub a of x is a x that is how we define the transformation T a. T a of y is a y. So, what the transformation does is just pre multiplies the vector by the matrix a and therefore, we get T a of x plus T a of y is a x plus a y. Now, on the right hand side we have the matrix a times the vector x plus the matrix a times the vector y and we know that the matrix multiplication is distributive. So, we can write it as a of x plus y. Now, if we call the vector x plus y as z, 
where z is x plus y then we get a z. Now, since x is in f n y is in f n z is also in f n. So, the moment you take a vector z in f n and pre multiply it by a that means, we are taking T a of z which means we are taking a T a of x plus y. So, thus we see that T a of x plus y is the same of T a x plus T a y and therefore, T a preserves addition. So, it crossed one hurdle for being qualified to be a linear transformation. The, ne the next addition, the next thing that we have to check is whether T a preserves scalar multiplication. So, we take a vector x in V, we take a vector a scalar f and then we look at T a of alpha x and ask whether it is equal to alpha t of x. If this is satisfied then we will have that T a preserves scalar multiplication. Now, we have x belonging to V alpha belongs to f. Now, since x belongs to V by our definition of the transformation T a x will be equal to a x which means alpha T a x will be equal to alpha times a x. On the right hand side we have the matrix a the vector x and the scalar alpha in matrix multiplication the scalars can be moved in and out of the multiplication. So, this will be the same as a of alpha x. If we now call this as a of z where now z is alpha x now, x is in f n therefore, alpha times x is in f n. So, the z vector is in f n. Now, the moment you take a vector in f n a z means we are taking T a of z. Now, z is alpha x. So, that is equal to T a of alpha x. So, thus we see that T a of alpha x is equal to alpha times T a of x and hence T a preserves scalar multiplication. Therefore, T a preserves scalar multiplication. So, we have seen that T a preserves addition, we have seen that T a preserves scalar multiplication, hence these two together imply T a is a linear transformation from F n. So, we started with a matrix A an m by n matrix A and from that m by n matrix A we generated a linear transformation T A from F n to F n. So, thus every m by n matrix A belonging to F m n induces a linear transformation T a from F n to F m by the definition T a x equal to a x for every x in F n. So, every matrix gives rise to a linear transformation from F n to F m. In particular, If we take A to be an n by n matrix, now in this case m equal to n, then A induces a linear transformation T from Fn to Fn by the definition T A x equal to a x for every x in f n. Now, since this is a linear transformation from the vector space f n to itself it becomes a linear operator that is T 
A is a linear operator on Fn. So, thus every n by n matrix induces a linear operator on Fn. So, thus every n by n matrix A in F n by n all the entries are from the field F induces a linear operator we will write L o for linear operator on F n how does it induce as above that is T a x is equal to a x. So, every m by n matrices induces a linear transformation from F n to F m every n by n matrix induces a linear transformation from F n to F n and hence a linear operator on F n. For example, look at A equal to 1 0 1 0 1 1. Now, this is a 2 by 3 matrix. So, this is m equal to 2 n equal to 3 therefore, this will induce a linear transformation from F 3 to F 2. Let us call this as T A mapping F 3 to F 2. How is it defined? It has to take a 3 component vector and it should map it to a 2 component vector. How do I get the 2 component vector? I have to take the matrix A and multiply it by the vector x which is the same as A is 1 0 1 0 1 1 and the vector is x 1 x 2 x 3 and therefore, we get x 1 plus x 3 x 2 plus x 3. So, this matrix induces this transformation which takes the vector x 1 x 2 x 3 this is the matrix the transformation T A which takes it to x 1 plus x 3 x 2 plus x 3. Similarly, consider A now to be 1 2 0 3. then this is a 2 by 2 matrix. So, it will have to generate a transformation which will be now a linear operator because m equal to n. So, it should be a linear operator from F 2 to F 2 and what should it do T a of a vector x 1 x 2 must be again a vector in x 1 uh, f 2. So, it has two components how do I get it I have to take the matrix A and multiply it by the vector x which means 1 2 0 3 into x 1 x 2 which is x 1 plus x 2 plus 3 and 3 x 2. So, this transformation defined by this matrix takes the vector x 1 x 2 x 3. So, this is a 2 by 2 matrix. So, x 1 x 2 and maps it to the vector x 1 plus x 2 and 3 x 2. So, thus every m by n matrix gives us a linear transformation from f m to f n f n to f m every n by n matrix gives us a linear transformation from F n to F n and therefore, a linear operator on F n. So, the linear operators on F n a large number of examples are the square matrices with uh, n rows and n columns. So, this is a huge class of examples which will be interesting to us because we are trying to solve a system of m equations in n unknowns through a matrix A which boils down to looking at the linear transformation generated by the matrix A that is the uh, transformation T A. Now, let us look at another example another class of examples we will be looking at a lot of examples 
in the world of matrices because that is our interest all our questions that we have raised in the beginning of the course are essentially concerning matrices. So, now let us look at the vector space V to be the set of all n by n matrices over f. So, it is the vector space of all square matrices of size n by n over the field f. We already seen that this is a vector space with the usual matrix addition and scalar multiplication rules for matrices. Now, look at this vector space fix a vector v here what are vectors here they are all matrices. So, fix a matrix A in f n f. So, once you fix a matrix A in f n n through this again we are going to generate a linear transformation on f n cross n which means we are going to generate a linear operator on B. How do we do this? So, we define for every x in V. What are the elements of V? They are all matrices. What type of matrices? n by n matrices and the entries are all over the field F. So, V is F n cross n here. For any matrix x, we convert it to another matrix n by n matrix. So, how do we do this? I will uh, use a notation which will be useful uh, to ge generalize L A of x to be A x. So, we are left multiplying any vector any matrix x by the matrix A and that is why we have used the symbol L that is means left multiplication by what the matrix A. So, the transformation is denoted by L A left multiplication by x. So, now we see that A is an n by n matrix because we have chosen A in f n cross n and x is an n by n matrix because we have chosen x is in V. So, both are n by n matrices. So, the product will be an n by n matrix and therefore, this belongs to f n cross n for every x in f n cross n. And therefore, L A converts an n by n matrix into another matrix n by n matrix and therefore, L A definitely is a transformation from f n cross n to f n cross 1. It, in other words, it encodes an n by n matrix by another n by n matrix. So, this A is the hashing operation or the encoding operation by pre multiplying the matrix x by A we are hiding the original matrix A and disguising it as a new matrix L A of x. So, thus we have a linear tra op, uh, at least we have a transformation from f n to f n. So, we would, the moment you have a transformation between two vector spaces we always ask whether it is a linear transformation. In particular, if we have a transformation from a vector space into itself, we ask whether it is a linear operator. So, is L A a linear operator on F n cross n. Now, L A will get qualified to be called a linear operator on F n cross n if it preserves the two by always it the linearity comes from the two fundamental uh, things namely it preserves addition and it preserves scalar multiplication. So, let us verify whether L A does these two. So, if we have x and y in f n cross n these are the two vectors in the vector space because we have chosen the vector space to be the vector space of all n by n matrices and by our definition L A of x is left multiplication of x by a, L a of y is left multiplication of y by a. And that says L a of x plus L a of y is a x plus a y. Again matrix multiplication is distributive. 
So, it is a x plus y x is n by n y is n by n therefore, x plus y is n by n. So, whenever we take an n by n matrix and pre multiplied by a it boils down to taking L a of that post multiplier. Therefore, we have L a of x plus y is L a x plus L a y. So, that says L a preserves addition. The next thing that is required for L a to be qualified to be called as a linear operator is that it preserves scalar multiplication. So, let us look at a scalar and a vector the vector space is n cross n. So, it is a matrix a vector now is a matrix again. So, we have L a of x is equal to a x by definition and therefore, alpha times L a x is equal to alpha times a x. Again in matrix multiplications constants can be moved in and out. So, it is a alpha x. So, again when we take x is an n by n matrix and multiply it by a scalar we get an alpha x is an n by n matrix and whenever an n by n matrix is pre multiplied by a that means, we are taking L a of alpha x and thus we see that L a of alpha x is alpha L a x therefore, L a preserves scalar multiplication. Thus, L a preserves both addition and scalar multiplication 1 and 2 together L a is linear and since it is a transformation from f n to itself it becomes a linear operator. So, L a is a linear operator on f n cross. Thus, every we started with a fixed matrix A and generated a linear transformation. So, thus every fixed A in f n cross n if you fix one A you will get one transformation induces a linear operator on f n cross n as above. The linear operator is what we denote by L a. So, every a generates an L a as above. So, we can start with an n by n matrix and go on left multiplying by a fixed matrix and then we go on getting newer n by n matrix and that is a transformation and that turns out to be a linear operator. Now, you can obviously guess instead of left multiplication we could have also done right multiplication. So, so we will write here as above by left multiplication. left multiplication by a. Similarly, given a in f n cross n it generates or it induces a linear operator on f n cross n which we denote by R a by the R stands for right multiplication by right multiplication by a. So, we have R a x equal to x a for every x in a by the same arguments as above we can verify that this is also a linear operator. So, thus we have starting from every fixed n by n matrix we can generate a linear operator on the vector space of n by n matrices. Let us now do a little more uh, on this example. In the first case we took a and left multiplied it by a and in the second case we took a and right multiplied it by a to get r a we could have done both we could have left multiplied as well as right multiplied and we could have chosen one a to left multiply and one b to right multiply. 
So, that is what we will do now. So, let V equal to F n cross n for ref, left multiplying you fix one matrix A and for right multiplying you fix another matrix B. So, let A B B fixed matrices in F n cross n take any two fixed matrices in F n cross n. Now, we are going to generate a transformation starting from these two matrices. So, we will call it as T A B. Okay. So, for any x in F n cross n define T A comma B of x to be use A for pre multiplying and B for post multiplication. Now, we we'll leave it as an x first of all you observe that everything is n by n matrix. So, the product is going to be an n by n matrix and therefore, T A B of x is also an n by n matrix. So, this belongs to F n cross n for every x in F n cross n and hence T A B is certainly a transformation from F n cross n to F n cross n. Now, we leave it as an exercise to verify. So, we will simply write it is easy to verify the same arguments we have to carry on to verify that T A B is a linear operator on F n cross n. We have to again verify that T A B of x plus y is T A B of x plus T A B of y that is T A B preserves addition and T A B of alpha x is alpha times T A B of x that is T A B preserves scalar multiplication. So, we have now uh, a handle on the left and a handle on the right or a coding from the left and a coding from the right to change the matrix x to a newer matrix an encoded matrix A x B. In particular, let P be a fixed n by n matrix in F n cross n such that its inverse exists, P inverse exists. Suppose, I start with an n by n matrix which is invertible, then we take A to be P inverse and B to be P in the above. So, if we can take A to be P inverse and B to be P and what we get is a linear transformation then we can define T A B. What is T A B now? T P inverse P. So, by short uh, we denote this by denote this as just T P because there is only one matrix involved and it is inverse. So, we will call it as T P. How is T P defined? T P is a transformation from F n cross n to f n cross n and it is defined as T p of x is a in this case is p inverse x b in this case it is p for every x in f n cross n. Now, therefore, it converts the vector or the matrix x to a newer matrix p inverse x p and since for any a and b this will generate a linear operator in particular for this a and b it will generate a linear operator. T p is a linear operator on f n cross n. We will introduce a definition which will be useful later. So, let x be any n cross n matrix we say 
f y belonging to f n cross n is similar to x if there exists a p in f n cross n that is an n by n matrix such that t p of x is y. In other words that y is a coded version of x in some code p the code is generated by p because it covers the vector uh, the matrix x as p inverse x p and therefore, the for the coding of the matrix x as t p x we have used the matrix p. Therefore, we say y is similar to x if y is the coded version of x in some code p in some code generated by some p. So, then we say x is similar to y or y is similar to we say we will look at these things later, but we will simply follow that y is similar to x if this happens. This is a very important notion which will come in handy in our later analysis and therefore, any such T p is called a similarity transformation. We call such transformations such linear operators T p on f n cross n as similarity transformation similarity transformation. We can generalize slightly these notions for rectangular matrices as well. So, let us look at the next class of example these are the class of examples which will come into play in getting the answers to the various questions that we raised about matrices and linear systems of equations. So, let us now take the vector space V to be rectangular matrices M by N matrices over F. Now, I want to pre multiply or left multiply X in F M. So, I have to take an M by M matrix. So, let us take let uh, Q be a fixed M by M matrix in F M cross M. Then for X in F M N define L Q of X again L is left multiplication by what Q X. This is perfectly ok because this is M by M Q is M by M and X is M by N. So, the product is going to be M by N. So, this belongs to F M by N for every X in F M by N and therefore, this L Q codes an m by n vector into another m by n vector and that means, L q is a transformation from f m cross n to f m cross n. Again whenever we have a linear transformation from a vector space to itself we want to know whether it is a linear operator is L q a linear operator on f m cross n along the same lines as we did for the square matrices we can verify that L q preserves addition and scalar multiplication. So, it is easy as in the case of square matrices to verify that L A L Q preserves addition plus and <coughs> scalar multiplication and therefore, L Q is a linear operator on F M cross M. 
So, any m by n matrix, so any m by m matrix Q in F m cross n induces a linear operator on F m cross n by pre multiplication by Q. Now, if we want to post multiply since we are dealing with m by n matrices we have to take n by n matrices. Similarly, every n by n matrix let us call it as p in f n cross n induces a linear operator R p R stands for right multiplication p on F m cross n as post multiplication by p that is R p of any x is x p for every x in f m cross n. And again you note that x is m by n, p is n by n. So, the product is going to be m by n and therefore, it is going to belong to f m cross n. So, and therefore, it maps m cross n matrices to n cross. So, we have again left multiplication as well as right multiplication, but when we are dealing with rectangular matrices, we must be very careful as to the size that we choose for the left multiplication and the size of the matrix we choose for the <coughs> right multiplication. Now, just as we did for square matrices, we can combine both left and right multiplications to as follows. So, given or fix, fix any q in f m cross n and p in f n cross n p and q are both square matrices q is size m the, the row size of the uh, space we are going to choose and the p is of the column size in f n cross n then define t q p of x to be you left multiply by q and right multiply by p for every x in f m. Now, you see this is m by m, this is m by n and this is n by n and therefore, the product is going to be m by n and therefore, it belongs to f m cross n for every x in f m cross n and therefore, it again quotes m by n matrices to m by n matrices. Hence, T a T q p is a linear transformation from m cross n to m, m cross n matrices and since it is a mapping and linear on the same vector space T q p is a, a linear operator. So, this T q p uh, is a linear operator on f m cross n. Now, we will see later that the notion that we introduced here for square matrices where we took p inverse x p this sort of transformation which we called as similarity transformations are useful in the question about diagonalization that we raise for square matrices in the first two lectures and then this the letter for the m by n matrices the type of 
pre post multiplication transformations that we have done here will come in handy in the question of the so called singular value decomposition which we shall be studying and which is the generalization of the question of diagonalization in the case of uh, from the square to the rectangular matrices. So, we have several classes of transformations that we can talk about for square matrices and for rectangular matrices. We shall continue to look at more examples because linear algebra one of the most important things is linear transformation. So, we look at more simple examples. Let us consider the vector space of all polynomials over f in the variable x. Okay. So, f x stood for the vector space of all polynomials. Now, for any what are the vectors in V? They are all polynomials, so we will denote it by P for any P in F x. So, that is for any polynomial define d of p to be d p by d x that is the derivative that is why we use the symbol capital D. So, the transformation that we are thinking of now is differentiation. So, take a polynomial p and just differentiate it and we know that if we dif differentiate a polynomial we will again get a polynomial and therefore, this belongs to f x for every p in f x and hence d is a transformation from f x to f x. The moment we have a transformation from a vector space to itself natural question again is d a linear operator on And again when does it qualify to be a linear operator it has to preserve the two basic operations. So, let us check this p and q are in f x means by definition d of p is d p d x and d of q is d q d x. That means d of p plus d of q is d p d x plus d q d x, but the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives and hence this is equal to d d x of p plus q. Now, p is a polynomial, q is a polynomial and therefore, p plus q is a polynomial and therefore, we are taking the derivative of a polynomial. The moment we take a derivative of polynomial we mean d of that polynomial. So, this is equal to d of p plus q. So, thus we see that d p plus d q is d p plus q and hence d preserves addition. And the next thing that we have to verify is whether d preserves scalar multiplication. So, if alpha is any scalar and p is any vector, vectors are now polynomials, we have d of alpha p by definition this should be d d x of alpha p x, but we know the derivative of a constant time of function the constant can be pulled out. So, this will be alpha d d x of p, but d d x of p is just d of p and therefore, we have d of alpha p is alpha d p and hence d preserves scalar multiplication and thus we have d preserves addition and scalar multiplication. It is a transformation from f x to f x. So, all these put together give that d is a linear operator on f x. So, thus the differentiation operator is a linear operator on the space of all polynomials. So, now we have one more example 
we will extend this differentiation operators. Now, we take V to be f 4 x and W to be f 3 x. The space of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to 4 is V less than or equal to 3 is W then we define T mapping V to W as T of P is the second derivative of P. Once again derivative uh, splits addition into separately and scalar multiplications are separated out. So, therefore, it is easy to see. Now, first of all it is you see that if you take a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 4 and you differentiate it twice it will be a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 and since W contains all polynomials of degree less than or equal to 3 all this will belong to W for every P in F 4 x. So, therefore, it will be a mapping from B to W. Now, it is easy to see that D P plus Q is T P plus T Q for every P Q in F 4 x and T of alpha P is alpha T P for every alpha in F and for every p in f 4 x and therefore, t is a linear transformation from f 4 x to f 3 x. We shall study more examples of linear transformations in the next lecture and continue studying the structure of linear transformation. It is the study of the structure of linear transformations which gives us the answer to all the questions that we have raised. Mm -hmm.